This bird is back, and it's better than ever. Golly, that's awesome. Hey there, I'm John. This is Two Brothers RC, and this is the E-Flight Extra 330 SC. It's back, baby. More durable, better avionics, and it's still easy to fly, and learn to fly 3D with, too. Today we'll be using metrics that apply to smaller 3D airplanes while I put this foam bird through the ringer and see what she's truly capable of. And to do that, we're going to jump right into how she handles because nobody buys a 3D plane to fly boring circles. So how does the extra 330 stack up in the agility department? The answer is pretty damned well actually. Before we go up and do anything crazier with it, all of the flying that you're seeing today is done with Spectrum 3200 and 2200 batteries, four cells of course. We'll cover flight time in a bit, but let's see the center of gravity first, which is almost identical for both packs. Now, on to Live John instead of VoiceOver John. One thing you're going to notice when you're flying this plane for takeoff to get it off the ground, you're going to need a consistent amount of a little bit of right rudder, otherwise it will pull to the left like that. So I'm currently giving it right rudder to make it go straight, but if I let it go hands off, it will pull right toward us. So we're gonna take off at us, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Hands off and it comes right at us. So definitely be careful with it. Add a little bit of consistent right rudder as you throttle up. So you're flying, and then just go crazy. Does really good wall to waterfall combos. You can do them backwards too, but it's not as dramatic. Wall to waterfall. Now mine does like to pull a little bit toward the right, so I do have to add some left rudder as I'm doing that. Just something that you may have to do or may not have to do. But you'll get used to it. Yeah, with that little bit of left rudder, it stabilizes completely, and it's very, very fun to fly. I mean, you can just throw it around constantly. Roll rate is just off the chart good. It's a lot of fun to fly. Pretty stable in uh, Harriers, too, which is actually one of the criteria for a foam 3D plane in the 900 millimeter to 1300 millimeter scale. Those of you guys wonder, <clears throat> how come I don't always have the same scale for everything that I fly? Well, that's because I can't hold a 1300 millimeter plane against one that's like one and a half meters or two meters, right? That just would not be a fair comparison. There's obvious differences in the way smaller planes fly. That's a pretty wing rockless free harrier for a plane of this scale. So I'm gonna give it a pass there because it's been flying pretty good. And some of that's turbulence because there is a little bit of wind out here. So it is doing really well for a foam plane. Of course, foam planes do have a little bit different criteria than Woody's do, for example. But this one is just phenomenal fun. And I'm pegging the elevator and it's got barely any wind rock at all. When did this thing go? There's the wind picking up. We're gonna turn it into the wind. So it just kind of almost stops. Rolling Harriers are fast. what it does with like forward tumbles again. <laughs> a little bit of stick pressure and you get some really nice looking launch of style maneuvers like this. Oh, I love that, that forward momentum that you get. It is so good. That's just like forward left. Not, look at that thing go. It just carves through the sky while it tumbles. Oh, I love that kind of flying. It is so much fun to fly 3D planes. I absolutely love it. Pretty good at knife edge too. And I still love to go up and do the quick knife edge spin tumble out of a half loop. It's one of my favorite maneuvers to do. Oh. 
a little bit of an accelerated stall there. You can stall 3D planes. Just because they can fly post-stall doesn't mean that they don't stall. Oh yeah, that just dead stops. Let's do some inverted stuff for a while too. We haven't really done a whole lot of that with this plane. Inverted Harrier is not hard to do. I'm not really doing that right now. I'm just letting the plane fly itself as I give it throttle. We'll start giving it some elevator input as we come around the curve here. Just hold some elevator, steer with rudder, add throttle if it starts to get weird. And if it happens to hit the ground, it's probably not a big deal because it's going so slow, it wouldn't make much of a difference. It's basically the opposite of upright Harrier where you do kind of have to peg the stick to keep it flying like this. And you do have to add a lot of throttle to keep it going like that and then you put it into a hover, and you can let it torque roll and do all the other fun stuff that you would normally do. But let's go ahead and flip it, invert it, and push it around, push it around, rather. Inverted Harrier, most of these 3D planes are really stable in because the vertical stabilizer being in clean airflow generally eliminates any wing rock that you have to deal with and you can kind of just go in circles or whatever you want to do. It gets more dramatic as you get slower and you start pushing the elevator more. You got to keep those wings level. There we go. Now we're steering with rudder. It might seem a little scary at first, but it's pretty stable. Now obviously your mileage and your airspeed may vary if you're doing this on a windier day. But the plane is pretty rock solid in this configuration, so if you like doing inverted Harrier, you're not going to have too much to worry about. Just uh, if it starts getting squirrely, throttle out. Make sure you're throttling towards the sky, not the ground. Level the wings as needed so it doesn't go into your partner who happens to be filming, you know? Much appreciated. Now I'm going to go ahead and scare the chickens away because they are going to get near my F-14 that's parked behind them and I don't want them to be there. So chickens, it is time for you to leave. I'm going to gently warn you. I will not warn you again. There's one chicken. Come on chickens, get out of here. That is a humane way of removing chickens from your airplanes. Just hit 10 Gs on that last pull. That was pretty cool. It's a very, very robust airplane. And we have some awesome clouds right now. Beautiful time of day here in North Carolina with this awesome extra 330 SC. Thing flies really good for a foam 3D plane, man. I'm enjoying it. I'm having quite a bit of fun throwing it around. One thing I did notice, even after aggressive flying, the ESC is only at 115 degrees Fahrenheit, and that is because Spectrum did, or rather Horizon did, upgrade the ESC, so it's no longer a 60 amp, it's a smart AVN 85 amp, so it has way more thermal headroom, more, more thermal headroom to perform without having to worry about it getting overheated. Although it is a pretty nice day out here in North Carolina, it's unseasonably cool right now. We are in, what is it? It's like 75 to 78 degrees outside right now. Yeah. Pretty nice out here. So the plane is handling, you know, you could call it heat for some countries, but in the US right now, this feels like early fall to me, especially as a person that was born and raised in Orlando, Florida. Yeah, I, I do love this thing. I love when I can throw stuff around like that. Especially those launch of style maneuvers where it doesn't lose any altitude when you throw it around. <laughs> Holy crap, dude. I don't get tired of that. That's just a little bit of stick forward and a little bit of aileron to the left and a little bit of rudder with throttle to do this. That's all it is. I'm not stick smashing at all. That's stick smashing. 
Oh, those are some amazing tumbles. Golly, I love the way that looks. I feel like we could do that here at tree level. Since we only have like a battery left, you know, what's the worst that could happen, am I right? Yep. Let's get away from the trees. Actually, fuck it. That's what, that's what could happen. <laughs> yeah. Right at us. <laughs> oh. I'm more worried about you. I'll take the impact, but. Golly, this thing is so agile. And this is all stock servos, by the way. I know you guys think that I modify everything. I'm not gonna really get into modifying this plane until later on. Uh, all I'm doing is flying at 150 rates, like an, or 150 travel like I normally would, 50% expo, using regular. <laughs> using regular Spectrum batteries and basically just having fun, tearing it up. Yeah, I don't want to have that fly at us that low. I'm glad I have reflexes still. Golly, that's awesome. Holy crap. Man, you guys who have watched me for a while know that knife edge spins are my absolute favorite maneuver. And I think you can see why. Let me go ahead and bring her in. So one more time for you guys who haven't like done a 3D plane landing yet, you can land them one of two ways. I'm gonna, this is following up to the current landing tutorial guy. You can bring it in low throttle, flat approach like this, just kind of guide it in, chop throttle, bounce it in, and then take off again, or, what you can do is what I prefer, generally speaking, is the Harrier approach, which is actually a little easier, especially when there's no wind. Uh, you come around, bring the plane in, hold back elevator as you're doing this, throttle up as you get into the stall there, that we fly post stall. Now we're flying on the prop and not on the wing as much. And you just kind of modulate throttle, steer with rudder as you get low, trot. And then do that that's literally all it is you just pull the stick a little bit like this and just kind of do that a little bit and then enable throttle cut so the plane doesn't fly at me and chop my shins up into a bunch of little shreds yeah. and then you just, you're basically just doing this the whole time you never mess with this stick unless you absolutely have to um it's not hard it really is not hard at all this is a fantastic airframe to learn on i actually learned a lot of my 3d flying on an extra 3d 300 the uh Extra 3D 300. Well, I said that backwards. Extra 300 3D from E-Flight. My first 3D plane was a Night Timber X, and I beat the crap out of that. I know some people love to say, you know, Timber X is doo-doo. It's not the easiest plane to fly in the world, but it taught me how to fly 3D. A lot of what I'm doing now were foundations that I built flying a Night Timber X, and then moved up to this plane in its earlier version. But man, that is a friggin' sick paint scheme. It just looks awesome, and it tumbles so well, and it flies so damn good. Um, for a foam plane, it's hard to argue with that. When it's I'm able to fly hard. anything confidently within the narrow runway corridor that I have, I'm really happy about it. That means that it's agile enough to be flown at any club field, including yours, if you fly at a club like many people do. It definitely doesn't really fight 3D inputs much, if at all. If it's doing anything weird, it's because I'm making a mistake on the sticks. It has more than enough thrust to basically do anything that you want to do, though I do believe that the motor and ESC have enough thermal headroom to prop up to a 13x7 or a 13x8 from the stock 13x6. That way you could even get more impressive tumbling out of it. I know some of you might mention that you saw Wing Rock and the Harriers, and you might be asking, why did you give it a score like that if you, uh, if you saw that? Well, that happens at any plane if it's windy enough or if you're not entering them correctly, but I've done enough Harriers with this bird to know that it's generally very docile in Harrier and it doesn't stall constantly, which is the wing rock that I would have dinged it for here if it was truly an issue. It is capable of fantastic post-stall XA maneuvering. It meets all of my criteria for 3D flying and then some, so the extra 330 earns a 5 out of 5 in the agility section. To see more of how this plane handles by a more skilled pilot than me, go check out Adam flying from the channel Model Aviator and see what he pulled off with it. Super sketchy. In flight time, my average flight was about 6 minutes on Spectrum 3200 4 cell packs, with the highest flight that I could achieve being 6 minutes and 30 seconds. Now, while you certainly could get 7 minutes and beyond if you flew it more gently, it wouldn't be aggressive 3D flying, which is what I'm generally considering in the flight time metrics here. So I do have to give it a 4 out of 5, even though I want to give it a 5 out of 5.
And that crappy landing of mine leads us right into the landing gear section. Now, Horizon claims that the gear are upgraded with new aluminum struts instead of the old plastic covers over a long metal wire. These definitely hold up to abuse way better than the old ones ever could. Even good landings on the old set of gear made the old gear wire bend, and it was a rite of passage for all extra pilots to grab their gear wire and manhandle it back into shape after regular flying. I know, because I did it quite often. This is a fantastic improvement over the original design, and it's held up well over two days of filming, including some less than stellar and quite honestly brutal landings. Unfortunately, I do have to ding the extra for the hard wheels, which are partially why it's so loud on pavement. This is an issue that some people care about a lot, like me, and it's an issue that some people just don't care about at all. I can tell you that the last version of the Extra would have failed on the stiff suspension and lightweight gear criteria of the landing gear review, so the new Extra 330 definitely improved by two points here. That was cool. <laughs> After that quick emergency landing there, you could see that the, the gear are pretty robust. Horizon definitely did upgrade them, so they're a little stiffer than they used to be, which with 3D planes is what you want. You don't want them to not be stiff, because when they're not stiff, what ends up happening is these splay out, and then that prop kind of kind of does that, and then it chops up and, and wood explodes when it hits. It's pretty awesome, but you don't really want to do that. Fit and finish is one area where the extra really shines. One of the reasons why plastic hinges are a review metric for 3D planes and airframes in general above a certain scale is that they make the airplane incredibly resilient to damage. That landing on the wing that I did earlier did damage the foam hinge a little bit, but the plastic hinges stopped the aileron from ripping off. So the foam hinges I was talking about earlier are fine. They're still on the H hinge, the plastic one there. Literally, basically no damage at all. I'm gonna probably just hit it with some orange electrical tape. It'll be like it never even happened. 100% love that this thing has hinges all across it. I wish more manufacturers would include hinges with their planes. Not that dinky foam crap, but these actual plastic hinges that are all through the airframe. Three of them on the wing here. You can see where we hit earlier on the wing, there's a little bit of a scrape right there and that thick coat of paint. And you can see that the foam hinge deteriorated ever so slightly, but it doesn't matter because this hinge is holding the, the plane. Like you normally wouldn't hold a, a plane by its aileron like that, but it doesn't matter. Same with the elevator. Elevator is rock solid, even though we've been throwing this plane around like crazy. Same with the rudder. No problem at all. Now the reason why you can do that is because it has actual plastic hinges. If that was foam hinged, it would have ripped right off. Just like the original Extra 300, putting the wings on is pretty simple and takes only a couple of minutes with a 2mm hex driver. For more fit and finish info, go check out Brian Phillips and see how he unboxed the plane and assembled it. Brian's been a great resource to the RC community for years, and you guys owe it to yourselves to check him out. Plus, he has way more interest and focus on the unboxing build and radio setup aspect of YouTube than I do. Into our last section, avionics and lighting, the Extra gets a 5 out of 5. With fast and precise metal geared servos, no ESC overheating issues at all, an upgraded motor mount, and relatively adjustable battery positioning. Hitting almost all of our review metrics for 900mm to 1300mm class 3D foam birds, the Extra 330 clocks in with 23 out of 25. Excellently done by Horizon Hobby. Some of you guys complain when Horizon updates an older airframe like this. To me, it shows that Horizon sees where their airframes need improvement and they focus on listening to customer feedback. That, in my opinion, should be celebrated, not complained about. Here's some final thoughts on the 330 before we wrap up. I love how gentle it is in inverted Harrier. It's so awesome to fly planes like this. I used to be terrified of doing this, and I like to say, like, if I can do this, guys, you can do it too. There is nothing special that I'm doing. It's just practice and patience. Um, definitely makes things a lot easier when you're experienced in it, so the more you do it, the better you do get. I guarantee it. But I used to never be able to do this. I'd be a nervous wreck doing this kind of maneuver, even in the wind, because you saw the plane kind of get caught in a air current. Uh, that would freak me out, but now it's like, yeah, some throttle, and you're fine. Nothing to worry about. If you increase your angle of attack by pushing the elevator forward, what you can do is continue adding throttle so that you don't have to worry about stalling, because you will stall inverted, guaranteed. So I'm adding more throttle to get around this curve here. But like again, it's not hard to do. We're going to add some more in, some more angle of attack, get it a little slower. Look at how steady that is. 
and you can go right into a hover. Wind pushing it around a little bit. So far, I gotta admit, I really like this extra three, extra 330 SC. Trying to remember the exact names. I wanna keep calling it an extra 300 3D. We're gonna try to land it in a Harrier, come lower, uh, keep talking about it. It's just really, really easy to fly. This could be a great 3D trainer for you. If you are new to 3D flying, this is a good plane for that kind of thing. It's not horribly expensive, it is foam, so if you crash it, you can easily fix it and repair it. Not hard to do at all. As I mentioned previously, depending on what segment of this video that I use, because, you know, we kind of got away from doing the live voiceovers as much as possible. We're on a deadline this week, because I got to get this video out for Thursday. It's got a great motor. I'm going to stick my finger in here and touch it. It's lukewarm. Like, they did a really good job designing airflow to get into that motor mount. It's not getting hot at all. The 85 amp ESC is not really warming up that much either. If I look at my screen here, I see that it hit a, a high temperature of 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Not bad. The old one used to get really hot. And when you put an AVN 60 amp in there to try to upgrade it, it would overheat like crazy. Well, not anymore, thankfully. It is a little heavier than it was before, but I don't even notice it on the sticks. It flies great. I mean, you saw me doing wall to waterfall combos and just floating around an inverted Harrier. The wing area on this thing is massive. It's absolutely easy to fly. This makes a great 3D trainer. This is one of the planes I learned how to do 3D on, the earlier version when it was like a yellow and black with checkerboards on the belly instead of like blue and white checkerboards with Jim Bork. Hope I didn't uh, mispronounce his name. The, uh, <laughs> this plane's great. If you guys wanna support what we do here at Two Brothers RC, and it really means a lot to us if you can, pick one up through the affiliate link in the description below. Horizon was so gracious to send this to us so we could show you what it's capable of. It does all the 3D maneuvers that I'm capable of doing. I'm not a great pilot. Well, okay, that's not fair to say. I'm a decent enough pilot, I can do stuff, but I'm not an Oliver Willis. I'm not one of those other guys that does amazing 3D flights. If I put one of those guys on this plane, he'd probably make it look even better. But for what I can do with it, I think it looks pretty awesome. And I think you'll like it too. Add one to your hangar today, down below. I can't tell you what the price is offhand. It'll probably be right here because I don't know exactly what it is. We're gonna cut this segment because it's stupid sounding. Uh, did you guys not learn? <laughs> Like, do you need me to hover over you again to make you go away? I have learned nothing. If only dinosaurs knew what they had become. <laughs> so if you guys want to learn how to do 3D flying, there are some links down in the description below that are from the channel that I have posted myself. Um, some of them actually involve this plane in its earlier form, the yellow and black version I just mentioned. There are a couple of others with the Night Timber X, one from the uh, PA Katana 52 and there will probably be more coming because you know, I feel like I can always do better with them and show you guys how you can fly and unlock your own potential. So definitely check those out if you want to learn more how to do that. Get yourself prepared to fly this plane. It's coming out very soon. Pre-orders are starting now. Again, if you want to support us, links are in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and let us know what you think on Discord and in the comments.